Good afternoon. Welcome. Thank you for coming. We're very excited that you're here. And I want to thank you in advance for supporting the cast and crew who are so excited and waiting backstage to perform for you by being a respectful and attentive audience. Because at King, that's who we are and what we do. So thank you for that. And enjoy the journey to Narnia. mistake. This is going to be great. The professor will let us do what we like. I think he's an old dear. Yes, but I'm not sure I like the housekeeper. There will be no disturbing of the professor. I think this house is boring and stupid. Oh, Edmund, don't be such a baby. And anyway, it's time you were in bed. Stop trying to talk like a mother. Who's it say when I'm supposed to go to bed? Go to bed yourself. Hadn't we all better go to bed? There should be a row for her up here. No, this is the sort of house where no one's going to mind what we do. And anyway, it's about a ten minute walk down from here to the dining room, with any amount of stairs and passages in between. What was that? It's only an owl, silly. Hey, do you guys want to go down to the room with the swords and the suits of armor? What do you say, Edmund? I challenge you. All right, but it's going to be boring. Susan? You go ahead, Peter. I think I'll go back down to the library and look through some books. How about you, Lucy? I think I'll just stay here and unpack. But oh, think. All right, but don't wander about and get lost. I won't be long. Susan? Susan? white stag. I'm going to track him. He went that way. I know. I've been on this trail all night. <sighs> so close. He was huge and so beautiful. My grandfather told me that, any, that whenever the white stag appears, there's change on the horizon. Anyone following him won't find any footprint. Oh my god. So, anyone, they will my grandfather told me that whoever catches the white stag will be granted their fondest wish. But we don't really know if it's true, because it's basically impossible to catch him. Thanks, Fox. That's really encouraging. But you know that keeping the faith is our only chance. Beavers! Centaur, you will never guess. Last night, as I was falling asleep, I saw the white stag. Not again. No, Mr. Beaver. I assure you, it's true. Now, Beaver, let the child speak. And I saw him just now. He went right by me. I could almost touch him. When I saw him, he was not 50 paces away, staring at me, just staring. He did not speak? No, sir, but there was something about the way he looked at me. I was sure he was trying to tell me something. Then he turned and disappeared. 
So I followed, and I had been following all night. I couldn't help myself. I saw him twice more at the river, and again, near the stone table. It's probably just leading you on a wild goose chase, making you th think something good will happen when it never will. Mythical creatures do that sometimes. Not always. What Mr. Beaver means is that the legend of the white stag draws the hunter on while remaining just out of reach, the joy and the pursuit and all. Ah, yes. In the legends of Hunor and Magar, sons of Nimrod, the great hunter king, the stag leads him on a long and dangerous journey. They never catch him, but the journey leads them to a new land where they establish a new kingdom. I remember that story. Seeing the white stag led to a time of peace and prosperity for the people. My grandfather told me that whenever the stag appears, there's change on the horizon. Something big will happen. Something good and important. Well, I'm sure it means nothing for us. It's only Jadis and our endless winter. I'm so sick of this winter. Be careful, Mr. Beaver. You know the trees are listening. I think you are wrong, Beaver. I think the appearance of the white stag in our land can only mean one thing. What, Centaur? What do you think it is? Something good and important? Aslan is on the move. I knew seeing the stag meant something. But Aslan has not been seen for years. Not in my time or even my father's time. Why now? I don't know, Beaver, but I do know it's dangerous and foolhardy to ignore the sign. Keep walking! Shh, listen. Get moving, you sniveling idiot. It's Malgrum. I'm terribly sorry, sir. And Thomas the Fawn. However did he get mixed up in that fat business? Whatever the reason, he's in a mess. And we will be too if Malgrum finds us here. You're right, Beaver. I'm going to go spread the word. You keep searching for the stack. Track him carefully. I'll meet you at the stone table. You can count on me. And me too. Tracking is my specialty. <laughs> If it were up to me, this would end quickly. All right, you, you're lucky that I am in the Queen's service, and in her name must I ask what you have to report. To report, sir? See, I told you they were stupid. Have you seen a child of Adam this past fortnight? My report is always the same, sir. I watch and I walk as I have for years, but no child of Adam ever deigns to grace me with their presence. It's just me, walking in the endless winter. I don't need your poetry, fool. Just your own oh, wavering obedience to the queen. Every day, without fail. Yes, sir. Excuse me, sir, but what does the queen want with the sons of Adam and daughters of Eve? That's not for the likes of you to wonder. But you do need to be very sure of what could happen to you if you let a child of Adam escape. She'll saw off my horns and turn me into a stone statue? Ah, oh, there's the brain, that tiny little head of yours. I suggest you keep the thought of what could happen to you uppermost in your mind at all times. Make an immediate report if you see any strange activity. If you can remember long enough, that is. Yes, sir. I will report. Be vigilant. You are watched. Goodness gracious to me. Good evening. Good evening, good evening. I don't want to be inquisitive, but should I be right in thinking that you are a daughter of Eve? My name is Lucy. But you are. Forgive me. What they call a girl? Of course I'm a girl. In fact, you're human? Of course. To be sure, to be sure. How stupid of me. But I've never seen a son of Adam or daughter of Eve before. I'm delighted. That's to say, uh, uh, delight, delight. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Mr. Tumnus. I'm very pleased to meet you, Mr. Tumnus. And how have you come to Narnia? Narnia? What's that? All that lies between the lamppost and the great castle of Care Caravel on the Eastern Sea is the land of Narnia. Narnia? And you? You have come from the wild woods of the West? I came through the wardrobe in the spare room. Ah, uh, if only I'd worked harder at geography when I was a little fawn. I should know all about these strange countries. Too late now. Oh, but they aren't countries at all. You see, it's quite different, actually. Back there, it's summer. It's midwinter here in Narnia. It's been winter for ever so long. But we'll both catch cold standing here in the snow. Oh, Lucy, daughter of Eve from the far land of Sfer-Um, 
where eternal summer rains are on the bright city of wardrobe. Will you take tea with me? Thank you, Mr. Thomas, but I really must be getting back. Oh, it's just around the corner. There'll be a roaring fire and toast and sardines and cake. Okay, well, I can only stay for a little while. Come, I will hold my umbrella over both of us. That's the way. Now off we go. Explore first, if you don't mind. Explore, explode, or stand on your head. It's all the same to me. Well, the first thing I like to do in a new room is investigate the books. Elves and their ways, breeding and care of unicorns. Is man a myth? We haven't got any of these at home. Oh, daughter of Eve, I wasn't sure what you would like, so I've done everything. Oh, my, it's lovely. Thank you, Mr. Dennis. Mr. Thomas, the tea and the music are lovely, but it really must be getting back. I was only meant to stay a few minutes. It's no good now, you know. No good? What do you mean? Mr. Thomas, I really must be getting back. The others will be wondering where I've been. <laughs> Mr. Thomas, aren't you well? Mr. Thomas, you ought to be ashamed of yourself, great big fawn like you. Oh, oh. I don't suppose there's been a, a worse fawn since the beginning of the world. What have you done? I'm in the pay of the, the White Witch. The White Witch? Who is she? She's the one who keeps Narnia under her crooked thumb. She's the one who makes it always winter. Always winter and never Christmas. Think of that. That's awful. What does she pay you for? I'm paid to be a kidnapper. Look at me, daughter of Eve. Do you believe that I'm the sort of fond to meet a poor, innocent child in the wood and invite it home for tea so I could hand it over to the witch? You would do nothing of the sort. But I have. Well, that's pretty bad, but I'm sure you'll never do it again. Don't you understand? It's not something I have done. It's something I'm doing now. What do you mean? You're the child. The witch told me that I, if I ever meet any human children wandering in the woods, I was to catch them for her. And you're the first one I've ever met. So I was pretending to be your friend. And all this time, I was waiting for you to fall asleep so I could go tell the witch. Hopefully you won't, Mr. Tumnus. Will you? If I don't, she's sure to find out. She'll saw off my horns and cut off my tail and turn me into a stone statue until the four thrones of Care Caravelle are filled, if that time ever comes. I'm very sorry, Mr. Tumnus, but please let me go home. I didn't realize what humans were like, but now I know I can't hand you over to the witch. If I see you to the lamppost, you think you can find your way back to spare oom and wardrobe? I think so. Off we go. Quietly does it. The woods are full of her spies. Even some of the trees are on her side. All right, hurry home, as quick as you can. And can you ever forgive me? Of course I can. I just hope you don't get in too much trouble because of me. Here, take this to remember me by. Thank you. Farewell, daughter of Eve. Now go.
Jack, I've returned, don't worry. What on earth are you talking about, Lucy? Haven't you all been wondering where I've been? We decided to dig an air raid shelter. But I've been away for hours and hours. She's losing her mind. What do you mean, Lou? What I said. When you guys all went exploring, I went to find you, but then I got lost, and then there was this wardrobe, and I went in, and I had tea, and there's all sorts of things happened. And... Don't be silly, Lou. You're only alone for a few minutes. You're just making up a story for fun, aren't you, Lou? I'm not. It's, it's a magical wardrobe, and there's a wood inside, and a witch, and fawn, and it's called Narnia. She's gone completely bonkers. That's enough, Ed. That's a good joke, Lou, but it's time to stop. But it's not a joke. You have to believe me. That's enough now. Drop it. Come with us and help dig the shelter. Some tea? Shut up, Fawn! No use pretending. I said you were being watched. Did you think I would not know? No, what, sir? That you had a daughter of Eve in your grasp and you let her go. Well, she was only one child and the queen wanted four, so I did not think... That's exactly right. You did not think. You did not stop to adequately consider the consequences of your actions. You are more of a fool than I thought. But it doesn't matter anymore. Take a last look around, Fawn. You won't be back. Soon, your name will be written in stone. Your own! This floor. 100, Listen, Lou, sorry I didn't believe you. You were right all along. Just like a girl soaking somewhere won't even accept an apology. That tree, Grimlick, consider it done, your majesty. You there. Who, me? Yes, you. Kneel in the presence of the mighty ruler of Narnia. But I am kneeling. How dare you challenge the first servant of Queen Jadis? Lower fool! Now that's more like it. And what, pray, are you? Uh, my name is Edmund. Is that how you address a queen? I'm sorry, Your Majesty. I did not know. He did not know. 
not know the Queen of Narnia, you shall know us better hereafter. Now I repeat, what are you? Speak, fool, or you will regret it. I'm a boy, your majesty. A boy? A boy? Did you hear that, Grunlick? A boy. He must be a son of Adam. He looks more like an idiot. Tell me, boy, how did you come to enter my domain? I came through a wardrobe, your majesty. A wardrobe? A wardrobe? What do you mean? I just opened a door and found myself here. What kind of a door, boy? It must be a door from the world of men. I have heard of such things. This may wreck all, but he is only one and easily dealt with. I will happily deal with him, majesty. My poor child, how cold you look. Grimlick, bring him something warm to drink. Right away, majesty. Tell me, Edmund, my dear son of Adam, are there any more of you humans in these parts? Yes, my sister Lucy. She said she met a fawn. I think she might be looking for him. Ah, uh, here is your drink, sweet and delicious. It's wonderful. I'm so glad. Now, let's see. You and Lucy, you say? That's only two humans. But didn't the prophecy say there would be four, Majesty? Yes, so we have nothing to worry about. Unless... <laughs> you don't have any brothers and sisters, do you? Yes, Peter and Susan. Where, pray tell? Are they? Still in the house on the other side of the wardrobe where we are visiting. But that makes four humans and fulfills the prophecy. Yes, but we have caught one and he will soon fall deeper under our spell and help us catch the other three. Now, my dear, you must be hungry. You like candy, yes? What is your favorite? Now that's easy. Turkish delight, your majesty. How fortunate. I just happen to have some right here. Enjoy, my little prince. It's the best Turkish delight I have ever tasted. Son of Adam, I would so much like to meet your brother and sisters. Will you bring them to me? I will try. Because if you did come back and bring them to my house, I could give you lots more Turkish delight. It's a lovely place, my house. There are whole rooms filled with Turkish delight. Whole rooms. I don't have any children of my own. I want a nice boy who I can bring up to be the king of Narnia when I'm gone. The king could wear a golden crown and sit on the throne in my castle and eat Turkish delight all day long. Can we go there now? First, I must meet your brother and sisters to make sure they'd be suitable courtiers for my little king. There's nothing special about them. Go back to your country now and come to me another day with them. Do you understand? It's no good coming without them. No good. Do you see those two hills rising above the trees? I think so. My house lies right between them. Just walk through the woods towards the hills and you will find it. But remember, bring the others with you. I'd be very angry if you came alone. Very angry. <laughs> and by the way, you needn't mention me to them. That fawn may have told your sister nasty stories about me. Nasty stories. Fawns will say anything you know. Please, can I have some Turkish delight to eat as I walk? No! You must wait till next time. Next time. Next time. Don't forget, come soon. Come soon. Edmund, you came? See, I told you Narnia was real. But there's something terrible. I can't find Mr. Tonus anywhere. I mean, we have to, I, I went to his cave and, and he wasn't there and I'm so nervous that the witch has punished him for letting me go. The white witch, who is she? She calls herself the queen of Narnia, but she has no right to call herself the queen of anything. She turns people into stone and she's made magic, so it's always winter here. Always winter, never Christmas. Who told you all that stuff? 
Mr. Tumnus, the fawn. Fawns will say anything, you know. You just can't believe them. Who said so? Ask anyone. Come on, let's go. My feet are freezing. Yes, we have to go tell Peter and Susan. They'll believe me now that you've been here, too. We have to get them to come back with us so that they can help us find Mr. Tumnus. Edmund, you look awful. Are you okay? I'm fine, just queasy. Must have been something you ate. Come on, let's go. Broken Dam will just have to wait. I told them we'd meet them here. Yes, this business is far more important. It could be the beginning of something. Do you think Centaur can do anything? It's so exciting. Oh, Centaur, we're so grateful you have came. There isn't much time. We have some important news for you too. What has happened? We were out inspecting what appeared to be a rather severe break in our dam when we saw Malgrim. And his nasty lieutenant, Bartle. That's not unusual. They patrol the woods regularly. Yes, but this time, he was dragging Mr. Thomas behind him. Poor creature. He looked terrified. It seems that they roughed him up pretty badly. We went back to his house, and it was destroyed. I tracked them for an hour. They were definitely heading for the witch's castle. Bartolf kept smacking him because he couldn't keep up. It made me so mad I was going to challenge him. But Tumnus waved me off and dropped this. What is that? We aren't sure, but we think it belongs to a human. A female from the look of it. You think a daughter of Eve has been in Narnia? Yes, and that Thomas let her go. Which would explain why he would have come within Malgrim's sights. Poor creature, he'll be stoned by now, for sure. I think we should go and rescue him. Fox, no one is rescued from the witch's castle. Do you have any idea where this human has gone? No, Tumnus could tell us nothing. It was all he could do to drop the handkerchief. If the daughter of Eve has any brains, she would have left Narnia the minute she had the chance never to return. Or to return with others. Others? Do you mean there's more humans? Perhaps. Remember the prophecy? Two sons of Adam and two daughters of Eve. As we suspected, Aslan is indeed on the move. They say he'll be in Narnia any day now. Aslan, at last! If the children of Adam do return, and we can get them to the stone table to meet Aslan, the prophecy could be fulfilled. And winter will end. Centaur, what can we do to help? We must be vigilant and await the return. Then I must intercept them and safely guide them to the stone table without the witch becoming aware. Centaur, I don't think you should be the first thing that they see. Ah, yes. They will likely be afraid and go back to where they came from. Good thinking, unicorn. I could go. Humans are used to seeing foxes, and I can be very friendly. Hmm. Fox, I think you are right. You should find a way to meet them, as you are less likely to cause panic. Then you should bring them to Mr. and Mrs. Beaver, who will help guide them to the stone table. We will not be far away, and will intercede if you're stopped by Malgrim and his crew. Yes, sir. I can do it. You should wait near Tumnus's cave, as that is familiar territory, at least for the one who is here. What if they're afraid of me, or don't trust us? When Fox brings them to you, you must find a way to get in their good graces. We're all counting on you. Centaur, we'll do it. Fox, come with us so we can plan. We'll talk on the way. Don't worry, dear. It'll be all right. You'll see. See, Peter, I told you it was real. Yes, I apologize, Lou, for not believing you. It's so cold here, even with these coats on. 
Yeah, I'm not sure about us taking them. I'm sure nobody would mind. It isn't as if we wanted to take them out of the house. We won't even take them out of the wardrobe. I didn't think of it that way, Susan. Now let's put it that way. I see. What should we do first? I think we should explore first. We should head in that direction. We don't have time to explore. We need to find Mr. Tumnus. We need to head for a skate. I'm not sure, Lucy. I don't like it here. I think we should go back. This not doesn't feel right. Not without finding Mr. Tumnus. You already tried, and you couldn't even find his cave. Well, we should try one more time. Lucy, you lead the way. I know we went in this direction. He had the strangest umbrella to hold over his head to keep the snow off of us as we walked. Who has an umbrella in the snow? Quiet, Ed. I know his house was right here. What's that? The former occupant of these premises, the Fawn Tumnus, is under arrest at a winning trial on a charge of high treason against Her Imperial Majesty Jadis, Queen of Narnia? Also for converting Her Majesty's enemies and fraternizing with humans. Sign Malgrim, Captain of the Secret Police? Long live the Queen? I don't much like this Narnia. Oh no, I was afraid this would happen. Who is this Queen, Lou? She's not a real Queen, although if people hate her. She made a spell over this whole country, so it's always winter, never Christmas. Narnia doesn't seem a very friendly place. It's getting colder every minute, and we brought nothing to eat. Let's go home. But we can't. Mr. Mr. Thomas is in trouble because of me. He hid me from the queen. That's what it means by fraternizing with humans. We have to save him. I suppose Lou is right. What do you think, Susan? I wish we never come here. But Lucy's right. We must try to help this fawn. Where should we look first? I think we should look for something to eat. You are always thinking about your stomach. You're always thinking about your stupid books. Well, at least I can read. Please stop, you two. We don't have time for this. No, we don't. We have to find Mr. Thomas. Shh. Wait. There's something over there. Where? By that small hill. It looks like a fox. Yes, you can tell by its pointy ears and red fur. Sort of beckoning to us. Shall we go to it? Lucy? Yes. I think it's a good fox. Yes, but how do we know? We don't, but we have to risk it. We can't just stand here until we starve. All right. The four of us should be a match for one fox. Crouch down. Make yourselves as small as you can. Are you the sons of Adam and daughters of Eve? We're some of them. Shh. Not so loud, please. We're not safe. Even here. Who are you afraid of? There's no one here but us. The trees have ears. They're always listening. Most of them are on our side, but there are some trees that would betray us to her, if you know what I mean. I've been sent to bring you to the beavers. Come, let's go quietly. Wait a minute. I say we head for the castle. Who wants to listen to a silly fox? Stop being so smug, Ed. Yes, but how do we know she's a friend? Quite right. Here is my token. That's my handkerchief. When I gave to poor Mr. Tumnus. Right. He gave it to us as he was being taken away. I say we head for the castle. I say we go with Miss Fox. I agree with Peter. Me too. That's three against one, Ed. Come on. There's food. Daughters of Eve. Well done, Miss Fox. Welcome. You must be freezing. Come have a seat. I have some dinner. 
It looks delicious, thank you. Yes, indeed, I'm famished. We're grateful for your hospitality, aren't we, Ed? I prefer Turkish delight. What, dear? He said it looks perfect. He's delighted. Well, go ahead and eat while it's hot. Miss Fox, you stand guard. It's snowing again. That's good. Anyone following us won't find any footprints. Do you know what happened to Mr. Tumnus? Very bad business. He was taken off by the secret police. But where have they taken him? He was last seen heading northwards. And we all know what that means. We don't, actually. It means he was taken off to the witch, who will most likely use her magic to turn into stone. Her castle is full of Narnians that she magicked with her wand, victims of her evil temper. It's cold and dark. No one ever escapes from the witch. We have to find some way to save him. It's all because of me. Don't worry. Aslan will put all to rights. What is Aslan? Is he a man? Aslan? A man? Certainly not. The ideas these humans get. Aslan is the king of the wood and the son of the, em the great emperor beyond the sea. Aslan is a lion. A great lion. I thought he was a man. I'll feel nervous about meeting a lion. That you will, dearie. And make no mistake. If there's anyone who can stand before Aslan without their knees knocking, they're braver than most. Or else just silly. I want to meet him, even if I do feel frightened. And so you shall. Word has been passed you are to meet Aslan at the stone table. Where is that? Down the river, a good way from here. I can take you. And once you meet Aslan, you can help fulfill the prophecy. But I don't understand. How do we fit into the prophecy? You will. Listen to the rhyme. When Adam's flesh and Adam's bone sits at Care Paravellan throne, the evil time will be over and done. What does it mean, Adam's flesh and Adam's bone? It means humans. Asa wants to meet you because you're the first humans to ever come to Narnia. What about the queen and the dwarf? Aren't they human? You mean the witch and the dwarf. They'd like you to believe they're human, but they're not. They're evil through and through. Not a drop of human blood in them. This care pair value you mentioned. How many thrones are there? Four. Two for sons of Adam. And two for daughters of Eve. And when they are fulfilled, you'll mean the end of the witch's reign. And her life. That's quite a responsibility. A bit more than we bargained for. But it's quite a necessity. We have to do our part to save Mr. Tumnus. I, I agree with Lucy. I say we go. Me too. All right, I'm with you. Ed, what about you? Ed? Edmund? Where could he have gone? Perhaps to get some air? I'll check outside. Do you think he could be ill? He hasn't looked well since we got here. Wait a minute. The last thing he said was about a witch and a dwarf. How did he know about a dwarf? Is there such a person? Yes, he drives the witch's sleigh. That means Ed has met them. Eaten her food, no doubt. He had that look about him. He was surely under her spell. This is terrible. I wish we had never come. This is the place, right? Yes. Go greet them. Oh, no. Is that? I believe so. It seems the witch has already learned of our location. Brace yourselves. All who dwell within, make yourselves presentable for an esteemed visitor. It's the dwarf. I resent that insinuation. I'm no dwarf. I'm an elf. What's the difference? Either way, we're in the hands of the white witch. Wait, Peter. I think there might be a difference. An elf, you said. An elf, I said. Elves are not that bad, if I'm not mistaken. You're not mistaken. He's mistaken. You're Lucy. And you're clever. You're very clever, because you know my name. And she knows your name because I told her. Father Christmas! At your service, I've come at last. She has kept me out for a long time, but I have got in at last. Aslan is on the move. The witch's magic is weakening. Change is on the horizon. And now, it is time for your presence. There is a new sewing machine for you, Ms. Beaver. I left it out in the shed. Thank you, but I believe it's locked up. Locks and bolts make no difference to me. And as for you, Mr. Beaver, next you look, you will find your dam mended and finished, and all the leaks stopped, and a new sluice gate fitted. I don't know what to say. It's OK, dear. A thank you will do. Thank you, sir. And as for you, Miss Fox, you will find that new set of fireplace tools you've been wanting just inside your door. I'm sure they will be perfect. Thank you, sir. Peter, Adam's son. Yes, sir. These are your presents. They are tools, not toys. The time to use them is perhaps at hand. Bear them well. 
Susan, Eve's daughter. These are for you. The bow does not easily miss. Use it only in great need. And if you put your lips to this horn and blow it, help will come to you, no matter where you are. Lucy, younger daughter of Eve. In this bottle is a cordial made from the juice of fire flowers. If you or any of your friends are hurt, a few drops of this will restore them. And the dagger is to defend yourself. Use it only when given no other choice. Thank you, Father Christmas. Well, that does it. We have many more presents to deliver. We must be on our way. Onward, LaFarlane, to the sleigh. It is ready. A Merry Christmas to you all, and long live the King. And now we must be on our way. We must tra travel quietly and quickly. You may well need the gifts that Father Christmas gave you before this journey is up. Come. Stranger. He is that human weakling I was telling you about. Where are the others, boy? If you please, sir, my name's Edmund. I'm the son of Adam. I come to bring news about my brothers and sisters. The queen wanted to see me. Very well. Wait here, stay still, and don't leave this room, or you'll be turned to stone like those you passed as you entered. You mean, those stone statues, they used to be alive? Yes, until they crossed her majesty and paid the price. An enemy of the queen ultimately meets a stony end. Watch him. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I think he told you to stay still, didn't he? I would hate to have to tell the queen you disobeyed an order. I don't know, Grimlick. I'd like to see what happened. It could be entertaining. How dare you come alone? Did I not tell you to bring the others? I did the best I could, Your Majesty. They're in Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Beaver's house. Is this all your news, son of Adam? No, Your Majesty. They say Aslan is on the move. Aslan? They're going to meet Aslan at the stone table. Never speak that name in my presence again. Yes, Your Majesty. So he has arrived, has begun. Perhaps it's only a rumor, Majesty. All the four creatures are liars and thieves. But it is getting warmer. Even the snow in the fields is starting to melt. If you have lied to me. I swear, Your Majesty, I've come to tell you exactly what they have said. Now, if you please, Your Majesty, can I have some, some Turkish delight as you promised? Bring the human creature some food and drink. It won't do good to have the brat fainting for lack of food. Your Majesty's wisdom is exceeded only by her beauty. Make the army ready for the journey. All is prepared, Majesty. We must leave, oh. <laughs> you, we must capture the children of Adam before they reach the stone table. Capture? But why? Silence, fool. I shall never allow that prophecy to come true. Never. That's stale bread and mucky water. Eat and drink. Yes, Your Majesty. You'll soon get used to prison food. I would avoid the green bits. Grimlick, make ready the sleigh. We must leave immediately. Your Majesty, I'm afraid the reindeer can't pull the sleigh in the melting snow. They will sink in the mud. Then we shall go on foot. Malgrim and Bardolph, this is the plan. Take the swiftest of your wolves to the house of the beavers. Kill whatever you find there. Then make all speed to the stone table and wait for me. I hear and obey, my queen. Which is our command. Grimlick, bring the human and drive him ahead of us with your whip. With pleasure, Majesty.
Look, there's a kingfisher. And the flowers are blooming. Is winter really over? The snow is definitely melting. It's a spring, all right. It's been so long. I can already smell the flowers. The witch can't use their old sleigh now. Children, we have arrived at the stone table. And there is Aslan. Go and greet him. No, you first. Sons of Adam before animals. Very well. Aslan, we have come. Welcome, Peter, son of Adam. Welcome, Susan and Lucy, daughters of Eve. But where is the fourth? He's betrayed them and joined the White Witch. That was partly my fault, Aslan. I was angry at him, and I think that helped him go wrong. Please, Aslan, can anything be done to save Edmund? He didn't mean to start such trouble. He didn't start this. All shall be done, but it may be harder than you think. In the meantime, Centaur, take the company and let the feast be prepared. They are tired and need rest. Peter will remain with me. Yes, King, at once. Peter, look into the distance where Narnia meets the sea. There is a castle. I can see it. It is Care Paravel of the Four Thrones. Once the prophecy is fulfilled, you and your siblings will sit on these thrones. I tell you because you are the firstborn and will be high king above the rest. That's Susan, blowing her hunting horn. There must be danger. Aslan, protect us. Let's attack. Stand back. Let the prince win his spurs. So the great Aslan has returned. My queen would be interested in this news. Before I go, would the mighty one like to test my strength? Do you see that, Bartolf? They're so afraid of Malgrim, they send a mere mortal to fight. Ain't a boy at that. This will be an easy kill. So be it, Aslan. I will make short work of you, just as my queen's army will dispatch of you and your cowardly crew in the wake of an eye. likely a mortal wound. We will return to the witch. Follow them and rescue the fourth son of Adam. Consider it done. Now kneel, son of Adam. Rise, Sir Peter Wolfbane. Keep your courage. Let us go and await the return. It is no use, your majesty. They must have reached the stone table by now. Let us keep this one prisoner. Let them bargain for him. Yes, and let them rescue him? Then we had better get rid of him at once. I'd like to have done it at the stone table. That is the proper place. Please, your majesty, let me go home. You have no home. I've seen me, Your Majesty. Dart stone table at him. They've killed Malgra. We must escape. I will not run. Go, summon all your soldiers to meet me here. If they want a battle, we will give them one. Yes, Your Majesty. All right, untie, and we have to do it here and now. Please, Your Majesty, let me go back to the world of men. I won't ever come back to Narnia, I promise. Shut up, human. This way. Stay behind me. Majesty, we are found and outnumbered. Leave him. Edmund, can you walk? I think so. Here, let me help you. And now we must get back to the stone table before the witch makes her next move. And turns us all into stone. Let's go quickly. I'm worried, Aslan. We should have gone with them to help rescue Ed. We can't risk losing any more children of Adam. I have every confidence in Centaur and the others. Be patient. I see them! Ed, are you all right? Did she hurt you? 
What happened, Ed? The queen, I mean the witch, she lied. It was awful. It's all right, my son. You are among friends now. Aslan? Come with me. I wish I could hear. Stay here, Lucy. Come here, Lou. Sit by me. Here is your brother. There is no need to talk to him about what has passed. I'm sorry, Lou. It's all right, Edmund. Susan? We're glad you're safe. Peter, welcome back, brother. Sire, someone approaches. Go and see what they want. Yes, sire. Shall we prepare for battle? Hold, my son. Let us see what comes to pass. Sire, this dwarf has a message from the enemy. Let him approach. What is your message, son of Earth? The Queen of Narnia and Empress of the Lone Islands desires a safe conduct to speak with you on a matter which is as much to your advantage as to hers. Tell your mistress, son of Earth, that I will grant her safe conduct if she leaves her wand behind at the Great Oak. The Great Oak, it is agreed. Here she is. Large as life and twice as ugly. You have a traitor here, Aslan. Well, his offense is not to you. Have you forgotten the deep magic? Let us say I have forgotten it. Tell us of this deep magic. Tell you? Tell you what is written in the very table of stone that stands beside us? You at least know the magic which the emperor put into Narnia at the very beginning. You know that every traitor belongs to me as my lawful prey. So that human creature is mine. His life is forfeit to me. His blood is my property. Come and take it then. Fool, do you think your master can rob me of my rights by mere force? Unless if I get blood, as the law says, all Narnia will be overturned and perish in fire and water. It is true. I do not deny it. Oh, Aslan, isn't there something we can do about the deep magic? Isn't there something you can work against it? I cannot work against the Emperor's magic. Fall back, all of you. I will talk to the witch alone. You mean the Queen. Shut up, Toad. Oh, Edmund, Peter, I'm scared. I wish we had never left that wardrobe. I wish we never came here. So do I. But I'm not sure we could find the way. At any rate, we need it here. Now, more than ever. The matter is settled. The witch has renounced her claim on your brother's blood. But how do I know your promise will be kept? Because I gave you my word. Now go. There is business to complete. This place will be wanted for other purposes. We will camp tonight at the Fords of Peruna. What do you think he has arranged with the witch? I don't know, but it seems dangerous. Aslan, will you be coming with us? No, I am needed here. The witch has business to complete. When she is finished, you and the others must be prepared for anything. But you'll Perhaps be even a battle of life or death. But you'll be there yourself, Aslan. I can give you no promise of that. But what if she attacks us tonight, down at the fords of Baruna? No, she will not attack us tonight. All the same, that's how a soldier should think. Come, let's join the others at the fords and have some supper. feeling that something's hanging over us. Me too. It's about Azen. Something terrible is going to happen to him. Or he's going to do something terrible. He's been strange ever since he talked to the witch. What did he say about not being with us at a battle? Do you think he's going to steal away and leave us tonight? I don't know. I've looked all over camp and I can't find him. Look! Daughters of Eve, why are you here? We couldn't sleep. Please, maybe come with you wherever you're going? I suppose I'd, ha I'd be happy to have some company for a while, but when I tell you, you must promise to leave. We will. Hassan, what's wrong? Are you ill? No, just sad and lonely. Now children, here you must leave me. And whatever happens, do not let yourselves be seen. Farewell. The fool is here. 
bind him fast. Look, why is only a big cat after all? Is that what we were afraid of? How can they? The brute. Now, cover the table to hide his shame and proclaim our victory. Now, who has won you, fool? Did you think that by sacrificing yourself you could save the human traitor? Not only will I kill you in his place to appease the deep magic, but when you are dead, know that I will kill the boy as well. You have given me Narnia forever. You have lost your life, and you have not saved his. Now, in that knowledge, despair and die. Now, follow me to set about the remains of the war. It will not take long to crush the human vermin and traitors. Now that the great fool, the great cat, lies dead. Walk around a bit. It'll warm you up. Look, it's Care Pervel. It's beautiful. What is that? I'm too scared to look. What could have taken him? What does it mean? Is it more magic? Yes, it is more magic. Aslan! Then you are not dead? I am not dead. Not now. But what does it mean? It means there is even deeper magic than the witch knew. Before time began, there was another law written. It states that when a willing victim who has committed no treachery... Like you? Like me, is killed in the place of a traitor... Like Edmund? Like Edmund. The table will crack and death itself will start working backward. Like now! Like now. And now to business. We must move to the witch's castle at once. We must prepare for a final battle with the witch. We, we have a long journey ahead of us. But the forts of Varuna are right over there. We should go quickly. They're outnumbered. We must first journey to the witch's castle and free the creatures she turned to stone. They will join us in the battle. Will Mr. Tumnus be there? Was he an enemy of the witch? Yes, because of me. Then I am certain we will find him. Come, let's make haste. You were the one with the gift, Lucy. Have you forgotten? Right! The potion from Father Christmas! Ed, are you all right? Can you speak? Yes, I'm fine. Just dazed. Peter, you fought well. You all fought well. Edmund's the real hero. If he hadn't destroyed the witch's wand, we would have all been stoned before you got here. Edmund, you've redeemed yourself. Always keep your heart in the right place, no matter how you are tempted. Yes, sir. Hello, daughter of Eve. Mr. Thomas, you're all right. I was so worried. Are you quite yourself again? All in one piece, thanks to your persistence and the power of the king, of course. Sire, all's prepared in Care Paraval as you requested. Friends, the battle is won. The witch defeated. Spring returned to Narnia. Let us go to Care Paravel for the crowning of our new kings and queens.
Sarah Paravel. Celebrations lasted many weeks. Aslan stayed for a while, but as was his way, disappeared, returning only when it suited him to see how things were going and to give counsel where needed. He's wild, you know, not like a tame lion. The two kings and two queens governed Narnia faithfully and well, and long and happy was their reign. And they themselves grew in wisdom and stature. Peter was a great warrior and was named Peter the Magnificent. Susan remained a wise, practical queen. She was called Susan the Gentle. Edmund was more grave and quiet than Peter. He was great in counsel and judgment. He was called Edmund the Just. But as for Lucy, she was joyous and full of life. Her people called her Lucy the Valiant. And one day in the fullest of time, as they hunted the elusive white stag, it led them to a thicket marked by a lamppost which looked oddly familiar. They left their crowns and robes so they would not get ripped by the underbrush and followed the path back through the wardrobe from where they had come. Lucy lingered, not sure if she would ever find her way back, but ultimately followed her heart and returned home for a while. Yes, the children will find their way back here again, perhaps not through the wardrobe, but there are other paths that lead to Narnia. For once a king in Narnia, always a king. For once a queen in Narnia, always a queen, they will return to their people. For good people need good rulers, and good rulers need good people. And that, perhaps, is the deepest magic of all. One more time for our wonderful, fabulous cast and crew. I'm so proud of all these people up here, and I hope that a lot of you will come back tonight because 12 of them do something else in the night show. So it's a really different performance. So thank you very much for coming, and we hope we see you this evening. Have a nice day.